Hello. I'd like to say welcome to all of you here and afar. We'll now have roll call. Ms. White? I would like to make a motion to excuse Commissioner Colson. Second. Second. It's been moved that we excuse Commissioner Colson. What did I just make? Mark? Oh. Motion passed. Madam Chair, I would also like to make a motion to approve the agenda without item for decision number five. So remove decision item number five. Second. It's been moved in second that we exclude item number five from our item for decision. All in favor, let's vote, please. Motion passed. Please stand for invocation by Commissioner Lauren White, Commissioner for the 6th District. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of another day. And be with the nine of us tonight as we listen to what everybody has to say and help us to make good decisions that are in the best interest for the people in Pitt County. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and we will have Pledge of Allegiance led by, please introduce yourself. Good evening. My name is Holden Burroughs. I'm a senior at North Pitt High School and I'm the student body president. Thank you for having me this evening and please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you. Madam Chairwoman, you have one person signed up for public addresses to the board, if the attorney would read the statement. Pitt County welcomes all comments on matters of public <coughs> concern. Each person will be allowed up to three minutes to speak. A total of 30 minutes is set aside for public addresses to the board. Please state your name and address prior to speaking. Already did. Phyllis Ross. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. My name is Phyllis Ross. My address is 4101 Paramore Road, Greenville, North Carolina, 27858. Um, when I was in school, I always wanted, when we had to speak before the class, I always wanted to be first. <laughs> so I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you and being first. I come to you tonight on behalf of the Pitt County American Legion Agriculture Fair. That's the long name. We shorten it to Pitt County Fair. Um, we have a lot of issues we need to address. Mm -hmm. Kenneth and I have operated the fair for 22 years, and it's getting tougher every year. And you know the old saying, the old gray mare ain't what she used to be? Well, I fit that category now. We're getting older. The American Legion members are getting older, and um, we're having to deal with a lot of issues that I was hoping we wouldn't have to deal with, but this is the world today. Um, this is the fair's 103rd year, and um, we did miss 2020 because of COVID, and, but we have picked up since then. Um, a little history on the fair. I want the public to know that the Pitt County Fair is owned by three American Legion posts. The Aiden Post, the Farmville Post, and the Greenville Post. When veterans came back from the war, they decided they wanted to start a fair here in Pitt County. So the fair used to be over at Guy Smith Stadium then it was moved over to the airport area, and then they bought the property that we own now and built the buildings for the fairground. So if it wasn't for those veterans, we would not have a county fair. 
and um, cost of running the fair is over two hundred thousand dollars. There are a lot of expenses involved, and I come to you tonight, tonight because we need your help. And I have passed out some copies, um, the sheriff's requirements. Also a copy of the number of deputies she is requesting that we use and the total cost for the deputies. In 2019, the cost of the deputies was over 19000 And this year, it's over $17,000. Um, also, I have passed out uh, our time up already. Three minutes. Three minutes. You can take two more minutes. Let's okay, thank you. I pick appreciate it up a little that. Bit. We have a I'll pick it up. Minute. I'll be a little thank faster. You. I can talk fast. Thank you. Okay, I passed out a copy of our guidelines, things that we are putting in place to make it even safer. And I'm not going to take time for the sake of time to go through every little thing, but you can read over that. Uh, we're going to be zero tolerance fair. Um, we're not going to allow these thugs to come in like they've been doing on Saturday night and causing problems. We have no problem the first part of the week. It's always the same night, the same time, the same crowd from the same school. And I'm tired of it. We're not going to tolerate it anymore. We have put in place some guidelines, things that we're doing, uh, cameras, uh, metal detectors again, more lighting, um, private security plus. We do need some officers on board too. I have met with the sheriff, not getting any cooperation from her and don't understand why. All the other sheriffs have worked with us. Mac Manning always put aside money to help us with the fair every year. He was on the premises. Neil Ellis was on the premises. She does not show up. And the one time she did show up, she charged us. Forty-two fifty an hour, just like her deputies, and she is an elected official and gets a salary. Our average attendance is low on the first of the week. On Saturday night, we have about 13,000. That's a lot of people. And that's when they come in and start this trouble. They slip in, they have their ways, and it's always the same group. We do a lot of community service. We do, donate $25,000 a year to Pitt Community College. We give ECU scholarship money. We buy equipment for the schools, um, that equipment that is needed. So it goes back into the community. The citizens of this county pay taxes so they can have a place, or they should have a place, to take their families and have fun and enjoy. So. I am coming to you asking you if you can help us with the sheriff's pay because she is not cooperating. And I have tried. I have really tried to work with her, and um, there's no cooperation there. But anyway, finishing up very quickly, I'm uh, I've suggested to her mutual aid from these other towns. She will not do that. And um, so, Commissioners, I'm asking you. Thank you. Can we count on your support? Thank you for your report. Look forward to you coming to the fair. It's a place to be in 2023 where safety and fun is our priority. Thank, Thank you, you for your report. Thank you. Anyone else out? Okay, madam. No one else has signed up to speak. Um, you next have your presentations. If the board would approve the four proclamations, we can go down front to present Motion them. To Motion. Second. Motion by Commissioner McLaughlin, second by Commissioner Nano. We'll vote, please. Motion passed. approved four proclamations this evening um, that I have the pleasure of reading and presenting. The first one is a proclamation recognizing National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. 
Randy Gentry and, or Jimmy Hodges would come forward. I don't see Jimmy. Randy Gentry is Pitt County's um, Director of Emergency Management um, and telecommunicators are a, um, a portion of that division. And this proclamation, which was approved by the board this evening, um, reads National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, April 9th to 15th, 2023. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services. And whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our police officers, deputies, firefighters, and EMS personnel are dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Pitt County 911 Communication Center. And whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. And whereas public safety telecommunicators are the vital link for our emergency service responders by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them with information, and ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety telecommunicators of the Pitt County 911 Communication Center have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. And whereas public safety telecommunicators serve as a critical link in care and property preservation, and whereas each telecommunicator has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their duties. Now, therefore, the Pitt County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week as April 9th through the 15th, 2023, and honors the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our community and citizens safe. This third day of April, 2023, signed by Mary Perkins Williams, Chairwoman and attested Kimberly Hines, clerk to the board. She may present that to you. Thank you so much for your service, you and your team. Thank you. A word? I, I just want to acknowledge all the great uh, telecommunicators we have in our 911 center and, and the professional job that they do each and every day for all of the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we want a picture? Did you get it, Andy? Um, if you could come up for a picture and hold your well, thing I'd open like to have in the you middle. Center. Great. Thank you. Our next proclamation is for Animal Care and Control Appreciation Week. If Chad Singleton would come forward. Also April 9th to the 15th of 2023, Chad Singleton is our Director of Animal Services here for Pitt County. And this proclamation reads, whereas the National Animal Care and Control Association designated the second full week of April as National Animal Control Appreciation Week, and whereas federal, various federal, state, and local government officials throughout the country take this time to recognize, thank, and commend all animal control officers and animal shelter staff for the dedicated service that they provide to the citizens, public safety, and domestic animals across the nation. And whereas every day, animal control officers and animal shelter staff put themselves in potentially dangerous situations to protect the health and welfare of all kinds of animals and the public. And whereas the Pitt County Board of Commissioners recognizes and commends the animal services employees who answer calls for assistance, capture roaming and potentially dangerous animals, rescue animals, investigate reports of animal abuse, educate pet owners about responsible care, and mediate disputes between neighbors regarding their pets. Now therefore be it further resolved that the Pitt County Board of Commissioners proclaims April 9th to 15th, 2023 as Animal Care and Control Appreciation Week and honors the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our community, animals, and citizens safe. Adopted this the third day of April 2023, signed by Chairwoman Mary Perkins Williams and attested by Kimberly Hines, clerk to the board. And we'll make it easier and I'll give it to you that way. Thank you for you and your team. Thank you. Words? Appreciate that. Just very grateful to this board and Madam Chairman for the recognition that we get for our officers and also the, all, the, all the great and wonderful staff that we have over at the animal shelter and animal control officers for what they do. We appreciate it. And we'll get a picture. picture? In the middle on the black dot. We'll balance this out just right. Thank you. 
Next we have a proclamation for National Therapy Animal Day. Is Katerina Schaefer present? Katerina Schaefer? Okay. Um, she requested this proclamation, um, which was approved by the board, and it sets April 30th, 2023 as National Therapy Animal Day. And this proclamation reads, whereas Pet Partners is a nonprofit organization committed to demonstrating and promoting the health and wellness benefits of animal-assisted therapy, activities and education since 1977. And whereas there are thousands of pet partner therapy animal teams serving in communities across the United States. And whereas Pet Partners has designated April 30th as National Therapy Animal Day. And whereas Pet Partners animal therapy teams are in Pitt County and play an essential role in improving human health and well-being through the human animal bond. Whereas Pet Partners Therapy Animal Teams make millions of visits per year in settings such as hospitals, nursing homes, schools, and hospice. And whereas Pet Partners Therapy Animal Teams interact with a variety of people in our community, including veterans, seniors, patients, students facing literacy challenges, and those at the end of life. And whereas these exceptional therapy animals who partner with their human companions bring comfort and healing to those in need. Now therefore be it further resolved that the Pitt County Board of Commissioners proclaims April 30th, 2023 as National Therapy Animal Day and encourages citizens to celebrate therapy animals and their human handlers. Adopted the third day of April, 2023, signed by Mary Perkins Williams, Chairwoman, and attested by Kimberly Hines, Clerk to the Board. And Thank you to this team for the great job they do for the, our community. Thank you. And we will get them to the therapy animals. Mm -hmm. And then, last but not least, um, if Mary Ann Cox would come forward um, for a proclamation recognizing Pitt Community College Month. So, Mary Ann Cox is with um, Community College Leadership Team. And this proclamation <laughs> reads, um, proclamation recognizing Pitt Co Community College Month, April 2023. And it says, whereas Pitt Community College is one of 58 institutions that comprise the North Carolina Community College system, which provides high quality, affordable, and accessible educational opportunities to nearly 600,000 students annually in an effort to develop a globally competent workforce and improve lives. And whereas Pitt Community College serves nearly 20,000 curriculum and continuing education students annually and has proven to be a valuable source of higher education in Pitt County and Eastern North Carolina for more than 62 years. And whereas Pitt Community College has demonstrated exceptional dedication to helping students, particularly low-income students and students of color, achieve their goals for academic success, personal growth, and economic opportunity. And whereas Pitt Community College has made a concerted effort to recruit and support Pitt County adult learners between the ages of 25 and 44 years old to help them acquire skills and credentials that can change their family's economic trajectory. And whereas Pitt Community College has partnered with Pitt County Schools on a um, technical academy that is preparing the next generation of quality craftsmen and women. And whereas Pitt Community College is leading Pitt County's effort to reduce recidivism by helping individuals who have been incarcerated overcome obstacles like homelessness, unemployment, substance abuse, transportation, and mental health issues to successfully rejoin their communities upon their release. And whereas Pitt Community College offers an array of educational services, including curriculum programs, short-term continuing education credentials, and customized training, to prepare a skilled local workforce that meets the needs of existing businesses and industry while attracting new economic growth. Whereas Pitt Community College is committed to, quote, educating and empowering people for success, end quote, while adhering to the North Carolina Community College System's original mission of keeping the door open to all individuals seeking higher education and taking from where they are educationally to where they want to go. And whereas in recognition of the important contribution of community and technical colleges to the nation's educational system, in 1985, the United States Congress authorized and requested then President Ronald Reagan to issue Proclamation 5418, establishing National Community College Month. Therefore, be it resolved that Pitt County Commissioners do hereby proclaim April 2023 as Pitt County Community College Month in Pitt County. 
adopted this the third day of April 2023, signed by Chairwoman Mary Perkins Williams and attested by Kimberly Hines, clerk to the board. I'd like to thank Pitt Community College and its entire staff for what they do for the citizens of Pitt County. Thank you. And on behalf of Dr. Rouse, who Please. could not be here tonight, I thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and all of our commissioners for your support of Pitt Community College. Thank you. I want to close it and we'll put you in the center for a picture. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's it. That's it. Your public hearings. If James Rhodes wants to come forward. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. We have five zoning related public hearings for you tonight. I'll be handling the first couple, and Eric Gooby will be up for the remainder. Uh, first, we have a rezoning by F&A Construction LLC. This is to rezone approximately seven acres. Uh, this is located on the western side of NC 11 North, just before you get to the extraterritorial jurisdiction of Bethel, near the intersection of NC 30. The request is to go from what's currently rural agricultural to general commercial. So the map here shows you, again, just a bit south of the intersection of NC 11 or US 13 and NC 30, just south of Bethel. Uh, this is our current land use plan. Remember the new one that you just adopted uh, last meeting goes into effect May 1st. So this is the one that's currently in place. Uh, it shows a portion of this just within the red or bubble area of commercial, and uh, there are some existing land uses nearby that are already commercial in nature as well. This shows those existing land uses. Um, we don't show the existing land uses in the extraterritorial jurisdiction of Bethel, which is just uh, in the blue shaded area to the uh, top of the screen. But just uh, at the intersection of NC 30 and NC 11, there's also another commercial area. So this is within a right adjacent to one commercial site. This particular area is um, rural residential agricultural, and this includes low density residential agricultural and certain other types of commercial or institutional uses that meet locational criteria. And those would be whether it's on a major state highway, such as NC-11, and spatial separation um, from other uh, residential type uses. And these can be developed on septic systems instead of sewer. This is the zoning map, and you can see this is just um, adjacent to a commercial site already zoned as such and has been that way for quite a good while. So the general commercial district, and again, this is not for conditional district rezoning. We don't know the type of land use. So this general commercial district would allow any of those uses that are allowed in our um, zoning ordinance within that laundry list of general commercial uses. Uh, it does accommodate a range of retail service and other type uses and access to major thoroughfares happens that NC-11 is also one of the corridors that we have an overlay district on, and that does provide additional protection as far as screening and buffering from adjacent residential uses. Planning staff does find this consistent. This information is in your package tonight, and the, also reasonable and in the public's interest for a number of different reasons, including it being part of the highway overlay district. Planning Board dealt with this at the March meeting and also unanimously uh, recommended approval. And your two motions, the first one, the consistency statement, the second one for the approval of the rezoning is also in your package. And with that, Madam Chair, we are ready for our public hearing. I declare the public hearing open. Madam Chairwoman, there's no one signed up to speak. 
Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? I declare that the public hearing is closed. Members of the board, what's your pleasure? Motion to approve as presented by Mr. Rhodes. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Lauren White and second by Commissioner Nunnally. All in favor? Motion passed unanimous. Next item, Mr. Rose. Yes, the next public hearing is for rezoning request by Marjorie Elks. And uh, this is to rezone almost an acre and a half. Um, this is located on Page Road, very near its intersection with Mills Road. And this is a reversion of sorts because this has been rezoned previously. And now the request is to go back to the original zoning that was in place. So currently it's a rural agricultural conditional district, which would accommodate horticultural uses, Christmas tree sales, and a couple of other different uses. These are the only express uses that could be used in that particular zoning district. The request is to go back to rural residential. Uh, this is a, just an indication of the site. And again, it is about a mile to the east of Hollywood Crossroads off NC 43 South. Um, this is of course showing the future land use plan and again, the one that's in place today, and you can see its designation there uh, as <coughs> residential. The existing land use is primarily residential, though shown in gold. This is the area that's commercially oriented uh, in the rural um, agricultural area for horticultural purposes. And there's also a church and the school just off to the top corner. This is in a suburban residential district uh, in our land use plan. And within this, there's a number of accommodations that are made from residential, of course, and then multifamily and a few other uh, types of non-residential uses. There are some locational criteria um, when dealing with some of these types of uses. And what's, uh, again, as I've mentioned, Previously, this whole large tract that's in the dark green, which is currently rural agriculture, was the surrounding area in rural residential. This was rezoned maybe seven years ago. There's been a subsequent rezoning right here in this portion of the tract, about four acres, that has reverted back to rural residential. So tonight's request is similar for a similar process for the one and a half acres with frontage on Mills Road. And this is primarily our rural residential district, not surprisingly, is primarily for residential uses. And uh, we do find that this is consistent with our land use plan since it is suburban residential. And we also recommend it because there are rural residentially zoned properties nearby. Also reasonable and in the public's interest. And similarly, at a, the planning board meeting in March, the board also unanimously recommended approval of this request. Those two motions are included in your package and we're ready for this public hearing. I declare the public hearing open with this. Madam Chairman, you have one person signed up to speak, Steve Spruill. Mr. Spruill. Uh, Jordan. Good uh, evening, Commissioners. My name is Steve I Spruill. I think we have a time limit, don't we? I, I'll just read this brief statement. Pitt County welcomes all comments on this proposed rezoning. Each speaker will be allowed up to three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address prior to speaking, and I'll keep your time. Thank you, Jordan. My name is Steve Spruill. Address is 1204 East Wright Road in Greenville. Uh, I'm here tonight to ask for your approval on this request. As James pointed out, we're in compliance with the land use plan, and uh, Staff has recommended for this and planning board approved it. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to try to answer them. Well said. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak? No one else has signed up to speak. Anyone in the audience? Declare that this public hearing is closed. What's the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve uh, planning recommendation. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Nunley, second by uh, Commissioner White. 
Let's vote, please. Your motion passes. Mr. Gooby. Thank you. This is uh, your third rezoning request tonight. We do have two text amendments after this, so this will be your last rezoning request. Uh, the request is from Philip Lewis to rezone 10 acres of his property. It's at the intersection of US 13 and Bell Arthur Road. And the request is to go from rural residential to general commercial. Uh, this is a view of the, the area. You see it is right at the interchange with US 13 uh, and NC 11 bypass. Uh, on the on that northern side at the intersection with um, uh, Bell Arthur Road. This is under the southwest bypass land use plan, so it's not under the, the county's full land use plan. As, as James mentioned, we have the new land use plan that's coming into effect next month, uh, but the southwest bypass plan will stay in effect, so we'll still be using recommendations for that plan for, for anything in this area. So this this does fall into that category. It's uh, listed as neighborhood commercial. And you see that whole northern section of that intersection is all designated as uh, neighborhood commercial. Existing land uses, uh, you see there are some residential uses along Bell Arthur Road as well as to the south, there's Emerywood subdivision. Uh, directly across from the site is a, is a commercial use. This was rezoned uh, a little over a year ago. It's now, if you're familiar with the area, it's now a duck through convenience store. Uh, and then if you go uh, further to the east and to the west on 13, there's also some existing commercial uses out there as well. Again, it's designated as neighborhood commercial. Uh, the, the Southwest Bypass Land Use Plan does say that is for small scale commercial development uh, in rural or neighborhood areas. So it would be typically convenience, retail, restaurants, and some offices. Uh, the zoning in there, you see it is rural residential, and again, as I mentioned, the site across the street from it on the other corner is, is General Commercial for that convenience store. Uh, General Commercial is intended to accommodate a range of retail, service, office, uh, limited wholesale, and moderate density multifamily in areas that are, at, are major thoroughfares and necessary utilities to support that type of development. And this is also within the Southwest Bypass Highway Quarter Overlay, so there will be some additional uh, screening and buffering requirements will be imposed when they develop the site. Uh, staff does find that it's consistent with the, the county southwest bypass land use plan. Uh, again, it is just mainly because of its designation as neighborhood commercial and its proximity to that interchange. Uh, staff also finds that it's reasonable in the public interest. Again, there will be additional screening, so we find that that will be uh, sufficient for the, the neighboring residential properties. Uh, the planning board reviewed the request in its March meeting and voted unanimously to recommend approval. Uh, there are two motions, as James mentioned in the previous ones. There's the consistency statement, and then also your second motion is to approve the request. Those are both in your packet tonight. With that, Madam Chair, I'd like to open up the public hearing. Declare the public hearing opens for this pro proposal. No one is signed up to speak. Anyone in the audience would like to speak? I declare the public hearing closed and what is the uh, pleasure of the board madam uh, ward can, commissioner ward i'm excuse sorry me, can we put the two together if you like okay um okay let me see i had it um the uh, first one is to adopt the consistency mm -hmm. statement as stated in our uh, packet and to approve the request by philip lewis to rezone the 10.0 acres located at the northwestern corner of the intersection. Is there a second to the two motion? Motion by Commissioner Ward, second by Co Commissioner Smith. Let's vote, please. And that includes the public interest statement as well, correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. Thanks. Commissioner Huggins. Thank you. Motion passed unanimous. We on the next one, Mr. Gooby. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned, we do have two text amendment requests for you tonight. Uh, the first is from Mr. George Shaver, Jr. Uh, his request was to amend the county zoning ordinance to allow commercial automobile parking and storage of equipment in the RA zoning district. Uh, the request was he originally asked to amend. We have an existing use called commercial automobile parking. Uh, but we felt after reviewing it, it'd be best to create a new use that we call oversized vehicle parking commercial. And we also are proposing some specific development standards for the use. 
So the first would be to amend uh, the table of permitted uses. And you see we would requ we're requesting to add it as a conditional district rezoning in the RA district. Uh, that would require a public hearing by this board, just similar as a rezoning, uh, like the ones you just heard. Uh, and then in the our commercial and industrial districts allowed as a permitted use with development standards. So it wouldn't require a public hearing, but it would still have to meet the same standards as if it was going to that, that public hearing. Uh, so all the same requirements that we're proposing, it would just be a staff level approval. For the development standards, we're proposing to add section eight VVV, uh, VV, and that would be uh, for the oversized vehicle parking. Uh, the first would, again, to make it a conditional zoning district in the RA and permitted by right with development standards in those other districts. Um, proposing a use separation of vehicles that should be parked a minimum of 50 feet from any adjoining residentially zoned property and a minimum of 100 feet from any residence, church, school, or public institution. Uh, re requesting a minimum area of two acres. Uh, also requesting that screening would be provided uh, from, from all adjoining properties by a buffer yard that complies with the requirements of the ordinance. Uh, also that fencing, a uh, minimum of six feet in height provided along the entire perimeter of the facility. And then also some noise restrictions. Uh, we feel like this type of use could be uh, sort of detrimental to some of the surrounding residential properties. Uh, so what we're requesting is uh, the, the, the noise would, should not disrupt adjacent land uses and should comply with the requirements of the, the noise ordinance. And in residential districts, also adding that any vehicles that are parked there uh, should not remain idling or generate any other noise uh, that would disrupt the activities of those adj adjacent land uses between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Uh, also improved parking surfaces that won't require to be paid, but they should be um, improved with, with an all-weather surface to keep it down dust and erosion. And then in uh, residential districts, we're proposing to have some, some prohibited activities, uh, such as storing, keeping, or accumulating any junk or junk vehicles, uh, any fuel sales, and also automobile repair services. Along with this, we're adding uh, two definitions to the ordinance. Uh, the first is actually to define automobile parking commercial, and that's really just to provide a working definition for that use to, to say that it's, it's for the purposes of essentially passenger vehicles. Um, that will be parked on an hourly, daily, or monthly contract or fee basis. And then also for oversized vehicle parking, adding a, a definition for that uh, that would define the size and the, some, 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 excuse me, some specific examples of those types of vehicles. So that include things like uh, semi-trucks and trailers, box trucks, uh, moving vans, campers, RVs, trailered boats, and heavy equipment or machinery. Uh, plan board reviewed the request at the March meeting and voted unanimously to recommend approval. And again, we do have two, mo two recommended motions. The first would be to adopt the consistency statement that's in your packet. And the second motion would be to approve the request to amend the zoning ordinance uh, and adopt the replacement pages in the Code of Ordinances book. And with that, Madam Chair, we'd like to open up for public, public hearing. Declare the motion. I mean the public hearing open. No one has signed up to speak. Anyone in the audience would like to speak? Declare it closed. What is the pleasure of the board? We have to have motion to approve. It's been motioned by Commissioner McLawhorn. Second. Second. I heard it coming from this way. There was a, Ann and I both. You Commissioner can. Huggins. Let's float, please. Motion passed. Unanimous, sir. Mr. Gooby. I think this is your last one, right? It is, yes, ma'am. Uh, this is actually a staff-initiated uh, ordinance amendment, and this is to sort of uh, provide some clarification and consistency in the ordinance. We've had a couple of things that have come up uh, that are concerns uh, over the last year, and these will help with us administer the ordinance effectively. Uh, the first is uh, under the landfill in the, the table of permitted uses, the landfill uses, the landfill construction and demolition, landfill uh, land clearing and inert debris, as well as uh, sanitary and solid waste landfills. We had some inconsistency in the language of our ordinance. Um, there are standards in the ordinance as far as setbacks and things they have to meet. Um, and in that section, it said that those, these uses had to be a conditional zoning district in the industrial district. Uh, but on the table, it said they just had to meet those standards, and so it would be a staff approval. 
So we're proposing to make it consistent with the other districts where it's permitted and just in the GI district, all those would be, those would all be conditional district uh, requests. So those would require a public hearing before this board as well. And under uh, sections 8WW and section 8XX, uh, proposing to change when um, underpinning or skirting would be required uh, for mobile homes. Uh, currently, they're required to be installed within 60 days of occupancy. So the, typically, the building inspector would go out, would do a final inspection, would issue a certificate of occupancy. They would have then 60 days beyond that to get the, stir, the skirting installed. Um, the inspectors would go out, do a follow-up inspection, make sure it's been installed to code, uh, and then if it's not, we would start an enforcement action. And so we spent a lot of time, typically on average, uh, about 13% of the mobile homes that, that are inspected don't have the skirting installed. And then we spend about, on average, about two months trying to get them into compliance. So in total, they're spending about four months to get the skirting installed. Uh, so our, re our request is to change it so that that skirting is installed prior to that approval by inspections. So hopefully, hopefully it'll increase that compliance rate and we can get them uh, taken care of more quickly. So that's the same also with the low density residential district as well as in our, our uh, other residential districts. Uh, the board did review this request at the March meeting also and also voted to, rec to recommend approval uh, unanimously. And again, we have two motions. The first is a consistency statement and then the second to approve the request. With that, Madam Chair, we'd like to open the public comments. Declare the public hearing open. Amen. No one has signed up to speak. Anyone in the audience who would like to express themselves? Declare it's closed. I have one question. Yes, when the skirting comes down or falls down, torn down or whatever, is there any provision in it for that? Not really. We're only checking to make sure it's installed in the first place. And so if it so falls down. So they don't down, have to keep it maintained? There's, there's no provision in the ordinance to keep it maintained, no ma'am. What's the pleasure of the board? Madam Chair, move that we accept the uh, text amendment recommendations of the planning staff Second and the board. It's been motioned by Commissioner Nunnally, second by Commissioner Ward. Let's vote, please. I just think the skirting should be maintained. I just think the skirting should be maintained because it makes a vagrant look. We're ready for the next thing. Thank you. On the agenda. Items for report. Mr. Dunnery. Demery. I'm sorry, Mr. Demery. That's all right. I've been called worse. <laughs> Sometimes my mouth doesn't work right. Give me one second, please. No problem. Well, I'm here to give you an update on our Litter Free for You and Me campaign. Hopefully, Everyone has seen our commercial on TV and heard our commercial on local radio about our Litter Free for You and Me campaign. So our next part of this is um, our fourth grade um, litter challenge. So we sent, um, we delivered um, bags to all the fourth grade classes in Pitt County and challenged them to uh, pick up litter. So every fourth grader in the school system, there's some thousand children are gonna hopefully participate. So what they're doing is they're going to take their bags home and pick up trash in the parks, pick, pick up trash in their um, neighborhood or ballparks, wherever they can, go home, mark it down on this um, scorecard and then once uh, the challenge is over, we'll tally them up, and whoever wins will get a pizza party. So uh, hopefully um, this will get them excited about picking up trash and maybe uh, get their parents to help as well. 
So here's a picture. We went out to one of the schools. These, this is a picture of the bags and the, um, the, um, what's on the bags and our litter free for you and me um, challenge that each school has a, a poster that um, was um, developed by our PIO office. And I would like to say a very thanks to the RPIO office. They've been tremendous, tremendous help with this uh, campaign. So next item I want to talk a little bit about is uh, a DOT's litter sweep. Every, uh, twice a year, DOT has a two-week litter sweep, and the spring litter sweep is coming up April 15th. We're asking volunteers to go out and pick up trash. Um, they can call my office at 252-902-3355 and I can help them direct them where to go or they can visit our website or they can go to um, DOT's website. Um, DOT will provide um, gloves, safety vests, uh, orange trash bags. They'll provide all that, all that stuff. All they ask is that um, you let DOT know where you're going to be picking up trash so they can go back and, and pick up the bags. And we encourage all the citizens to, to this week to go out and, and pick up garbage because we can't, we can't do it. The county can't do it by ourselves. We need everybody to pitch in. Another thing that was uh, developed in the campaign and we've started to use and I'd like to thank the planning department, um, Eli Johnson, with helping us. This is um, uh, a map that um, Nick Whaley, Officer Whaley, can use while he's out investigating illegal dumping or trash. He can mark this <coughs> on his app, and then it, it gets onto the um, map. This will be updated all the time. We just started using it, so it's, it's fairly new to us. But it's showing us if you see the the areas that we have problems in, and we'll, um, you know, patrol those areas more often. So hopefully this tool will help us you know, going out when we want to go out and and investigate. I would like to give a couple of shout outs if I can to a Mr. Joseph Scott and Mr. Ed Beiner. Um, both are uh, live in the Grifton area. And they uh, take it on their, themselves to go out and pick up trash in the Grifton, in town of Grifton and around the surrounding areas. And um, I, I had a long conversation with Mr. Scott and, and told him how much I appreciated it. And so um, I am, they have a, uh, they have something on uh, once, a, once a month on Sunday where they bring vendors in and I'm going to go out there um, here in the next couple of uh, months and, uh, and meet with him and hopefully get people more uh, involved with picking up litter. Also, uh, Jonathan Sutton and the Clay Hill uh, Hunting Club, they cleaned up uh, four or five roads, picking up all kinds of things like tires, construction debris, household trash. So I would like, um, and, and what, Hoping, what I'm hoping this will do is encourage other folks to go out and pick up. Um, you know, you don't have to spend hours and hours picking up trash, but every little bit helps. And now I will turn this over. Yeah, we want to just review the metrics from the first part of the campaign. Um, just to review the project scope, we had um, a 30-second commercial, the radio ads, print ads in several newspapers, um, streaming audio, and um, digital marketing with WNCT. Um, wanted you to take a look at this. Um, impressions delivered and click-through rate, I'd like for you to look at our average versus the national average. We um, really hit the mark on this one. Folks were paying attention and it was a good thing. Um, we had um, TV impressions of over 800,000. 
with total impressions of over 990,000. And to remind you, impressions are the number of viewers. It doesn't matter whether they clicked on it or not, it was delivered and they saw it. So that was tremendous. <clears throat> Here you'll see um, our social media on the Pitt County pages. This is what we call organic, it's free, it's, it's the work put in by the communications department to um, get our message out there. The gray line is um, in the, the January, the part one phase. The blue you'll see um, is the current phase where we have established ourselves. People know um, our message, they know what we're talking about. We've established credibility and you can see um, by this. And Tarpet or Ticket is the third phase of our campaign. It will begin May 1st, where we educate the public on enforcement fines and penalties related to littering and illegal dumping. And following that is when um, Deputy Whaley will actually start enforcing the penalties and fines. Yes. Glad to answer any questions. I would like to say that I have seen a major improvement with uh, people tarping their loads. I, I will stop somebody when I'm going in and out of the transfer station and will compliment somebody when they have their load. I, I make sure that I let them know, I appreciate it, you did a good job. And so I do see an improvement. We're not 100% there yet, but, but we're working. And during the tarp it and ticket, we're, I'm going to go out, we're going to go out on some days and weekends and, be, and give out tarps um, to, to the, at the different sites too. So. I appreciate the, this effort. I have received emails from how far away, Madam Clerk? All over the <laughs> state. Uh, we, we have and directly I've received some. And your effort has been received and others are picking it up and following our lead. Um, it's just great. And I'd like to say to the residents, please continue to keep it up as we move on to better building and economic development. Cleaning your house makes a difference. It only takes a few minutes per day to make it, keep it going. Anyone else want to say something about the ticket trash? Thank you. Thank Let's you. move on. Y'all know I get on it about the trash. What we got next? Recreation site plan for the office park, James Rhodes. Mr. Rose, it's good to see you at the podium. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, this is exciting. Um, you might recall just to orient everyone as to where we're at right now and what we're going through. Um, last year, towards the end of 2020 or 2022, um, the board decided to fund two community centers, one at the Alice F. King District Park, the other one, somewhat surprisingly, at our office park. Well, our office park really hadn't been uh, discussed so much as a recreation center. But we, the more we're out there, the more we understand it is the appropriate place for this. So, uh, you know us planners, we have to develop a plan. So you agreed with us and we brought on board uh, Rivers and Associates to help design a recreation site plan for this particular site. And it is, of course, a wraparound, you'll see some maps in a minute, a wraparound area of the agricultural center and a portion of what was to be for the Trillium um, project that was uh, considered several years ago and then was uh, reneged upon. So with that, um, we've got tonight, uh, we're halfway through our six month plan development process. We've been out uh, to a number of meetings already. You'll hear that in just a minute. But uh, we're bringing this pretty much midterm report back to you tonight. We'd like your input before bringing the final report back in June. So Ben Williams with Rivers and Associates is here tonight to make this presentation. 
and we welcome your input. And again, very exciting times, even north of the river, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you, James. Good evening. Thank you all for having me. Uh, let's see. Can y'all see what I see? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right, good, good. <laughs> all right, so as James said, this is uh, regarding the North of the River Community Center and Recreation Preliminary Site Master Plan uh, to be located at the uh, Office Park. Uh, initially, it's, uh, it started out as a 25-acre uh, uh, subject area there wrapping around the, uh, the office building. Uh, there's an existing overhead utility easement on site. Uh, there's a drainage canal that wraps around uh, the property. Uh, there's the office building and some existing parking lots out there. I, I imagine each and every one of y'all have been there at least once and are familiar with the site. There's just some photos there. Uh, there's some, the Arboretum is photo A. Uh, photo B is some uh, open space there. C is showing that overhead utility line. D is interior to some of those planted pines that have grown up over the years. Uh, e is a weather station. F is showing that canal or ditch uh, there. G is uh, where the bees are out there. Uh, and H is another shot of that, uh, some other open space out there. Uh, as James said, we are Part of making a plan is making sure we're getting input from the public. Uh, we made a great effort uh, to do so with staff, uh, county staff's help. We put things out on the county website. Uh, we put out informational flyers at offices, uh, distributed those through the school system, uh, those schools north of the river especially. Uh, we had three public input meetings at these locations, at Stokes Elementary, Belvoir, and at the Ag Center. On those dates, we uh, had, for the, the time and the weather that we were having on those dates, they were well attended. Wouldn't you agree? I would. <laughs> okay. Uh, we also had four stakeholder meetings uh, with different groups with different special interests uh, that I'll go over. Uh, part of the public input, we had that online survey. That ran for about eight weeks. We had 435 completed surveys in that period of time. We feel that was uh, very good. 97% of the respondents were actually from Pitt County, so we didn't have folks in Charlotte Mecklenburg getting online, filling out, putting in their opinion. 73% uh, of those respondents have been in the county for 10 plus years. So they've been here, they've got their finger on the pulse, they know they've uh, been in the system, as we say. Uh, out of that survey, top three barriers that folks uh, identified as reasons for not using the park was, and I get it, not enough time, uh, it's too far away, or the facility that they were looking for, the program was just not offered. 71% uh, of the people that filled out the survey said that they would come and use this particular site on a weekly or daily basis. So we're excited about that. And 58% of those folks said that they'd be there from noon to nine in the evening. So this is what everybody wanted out there. Can you see that list? <laughs> it's pretty long. So we don't have, we can't put all that out there in 25 acres. Uh, but, but there were a lot of uh, opinions, a lot of input, which is good. Uh, and it just shows that everybody as we know, this is an active area. This is an active community. Uh, we, the county has a lot of things already offered in different locations. So part of this and part of what came out of the public input was, hey, let's, let's develop this site and give them something that is unique, that's not already offered, uh, that's just not cookie cutter. And I think that's what we we're working towards. Um, that stakeholder input that I mentioned. <clears throat> Uh, the, the purpose of that was to uh, build a relationship with these, not just the residents, but industries, organizations, all these folks that have a, a unique interest and, and get their input and try to identify and build on opportunities and relationships uh, that can be beneficial to this site and come up with something that, say, the employees in that industrial area can come use before or after or maybe even during work if they are fortunate to have, have a uh, long lunch break. 
This is a list of those stakeholder groups. Uh, Maybe difficult to read, but uh, there were 22 representatives out of these groups that attended and participated, spoke up in those meetings. Uh, lots of county staff, DSS, cooperative extension folks, folks from ECU Health, uh, economic development groups, uh, industrial folks, Thermo Fisher, EMS, as well as uh, we're going to have a follow-up meeting with the sheriff too since they've got a facility right next door. Of, the, of that long list that I put up there for the indoor and the outdoor activities that were identified during the results, uh, during the survey, these are the ones that had over 30% response showing up. So, uh, you know, I said we had about 435 uh, surveys. So, I mean, this is over 100, 140 plus respondents are, are interested in these things. So on the outdoor side of things, talking about walking and greenway trails, uh, looking for playgrounds and open space, uh, soccer fields and picnic shelters were high vote getters. Uh, keeping in mind we're also not just looking for outdoor activity, but we've got the community center that we're looking to locate there. So what were we looking for on the indoor side of things? Uh, activity space for teens, uh, an indoor pool, Everybody likes to go swimming it's on somebody else's uh, property, right? Strength and cardiovascular equipment, uh, a space for fee-based classes, uh, senior adult space, a gymnasium, multi-purpose rooms, uh, aerobic and fitness rooms, as well as indoor walking, jogging track. So based on those, what we looked at and lots of meetings with staff and our professional opinion, what we're going to propose on this site or these items here from that 30% plus vote getter. Uh, the walking greenway trails, we're gonna provide everything on, on that side of the list. Uh, we had to scale things down on the indoor uh, just because of location, footprint, and the almighty dollar. That's the limiting factor in, in most of these decisions y'all make anyway. So we're looking to include in the community center, a gym and some courts there, the uh, classroom activity space, uh, that exercise space, multi-purpose room or rooms, uh, aerobic and fitness rooms, as well as walking and jogging area, which can be located around, around the gymnasium and court area. So what you see here is, now this is an older aerial because it was a nice cleaner uh, canvas to overlay these images on. Uh, in, in the area to the right of the parking lot and everything, that's that planted pines. Those have grown up significantly. Uh, but we'll uh, kind of deal with those as we develop the site. So first, what we propose is the building near the uh, intersection and the entrance to the office park there is the gymnasium. Uh, we've also, at the rear of the Ag Center, is an existing uh, metal building that's used for maintenance equipment and things of that nature. We're proposing scattered throughout some picnic shelters as well as a restroom. Uh, the two brown locations there, those sites are playgrounds that have uh, equipment in there for the zero to six or the seven to 12 or the 45 year old, if you will, if they wanna get out there and swing. The next is uh, additional parking and driveways uh, surrounding the community center there, as well as wrapping around the uh, existing office and expanding towards that multi-purpose field that's up there in that uh, back corner. That multi-purpose field there is about 450 by 300. It can accommodate adult soccer, can accommodate two youth soccer fields, as well as uh, be used for softball or baseball practice, football, I mean, it's multi-purpose. It just can be uh, used for whatever. Next, we have a significant number of trails. Uh, let me get my numbers there so I can be exact. Uh, you know, there's already a lot of walking that goes on out there from staff. Uh, so there's some well-beaten paths. Uh, we were gonna utilize the overhead utility easement there uh, to have some trails in. We're providing connectivity to future greenway trails as well as some spurs for future uh, trail extension interior to the complex. Uh, the outer loop 
if you will, uh, that is approximately 0.77 miles of trail there. Interior trails will be another almost 0.3 miles. The Arboretum, the trail that's already out there that's uh, around the Arboretum is about a quarter of a mile. So once all of these are constructed and connected, you'll have about 1.3 miles of trails there. Uh, certainly one of the items that would go on site would be a, uh, a map that has these loops and have the distances so folks would know how far they're walking. If they uh, want to hit two miles, they can figure out a, a path to do so. So finally there, uh, we've got some landscaping uh, vegetation that we've uh, spotted in there, as well as uh, the green clusters are uh, some vegetation that the existing pines that will have selective clearing, uh, thinning, limbing up so that it's not just a wall of trees that you can actually see through for safety reasons. So mom can sit at a picnic shelter and see kids playing in uh, both playgrounds, as well as uh, including an environmental education. If you look in that large uh, cluster there between the two uh, playgrounds, there's one blue rooftop. That, that interior uh, shelter we were looking at as being an environmental education, outdoor classroom type facility. Uh, nothing fancy, unless you direct us otherwise, uh, but just a place for uh, outdoor environmental ed type activities can occur. It can be classrooms, uh, from schools, hopping the bus right out there, learn about things at the Arboretum. Uh, but we were going to open that area up a little bit and just have some natural play areas. I mean, I grew up playing with sticks and rocks. It's not bad for you kids to do that this day and age as well. So, you know, the, the next step after we get some comments from y'all, feedback, uh, we'll be rolling into cost estimation, report preparation, and then finalizing that site plan right there. I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have any have comments. One, how far is it from the, what you call that swimming pool that's over there? Aquatic center. Aquatic. How far is it, uh, is there going to be a cut through? Um, is, because they can leave the aquatic center and come to the tick to the blue the outdoor picnic and go home. You're talking about the community center or your existing the existing swimming aquatics. Greenville oh, Aquatic Center. I, I'm Green not quite aquatics. sure what that distance is there gonna be a, a way is there no okay. No I was just wondering if there was any thought well, so the, this future, so on the main road there, we've got a spur off of the interior uh, trails, and that's going to, uh, I believe in the Greenway plan, there's plans to connect by way of trails over to River Park North, uh, Wildwood, you know, that's, an, that's a whole nother plan and a whole nother uh, project. Uh, but, but having that spur and providing that future connectivity for uh, folks to be able to walk, hike, bike to those destinations. Bicycles, paths and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I just wanted to um, commend planning staff and, and your group for coming up with a plan. Um, also uh, working in some of the existing vegetation and building in green spaces and wild play areas that, that you know, so, you say playing with sticks and rocks is so important this day and age for, for, for our youth to be outside and be able to experience that and so that, that you're mindful of that and really seeing a diverse approach at right now, which like you said, it's a blank canvas and then we're being, um, our board is being really smart about using what we've got and making it better for the future citizens. So I just wanted to, to thank you and uh, um, Mr. Rose and the rest of the staff for great effort. Thank Anyone you. else? Yes, Melvin. Hey, Melvin. Uh, 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 Commissioner Flohorn. Thank you, Melvin. What was the representative uh, age group uh, that attended those meetings? 
uh, the the actual public input meetings uh, it was definitely an older group uh, the stakeholder meetings that's a range of professionals uh, survey wise we had a, a wide range of households that had a wide range of uh, age of children in there uh, there were single uh, folks living by themselves I mean they were you know ranges from 4 to 84 filling out those surveys uh, two I'd like to mention uh, you know in that effort of pushing out and getting that input uh, 25 percent of the respondents were in the minority category for the population of the county so there was a a wide range of age and representation all across the board thank you good yes, job well done C commissioner McLaughlin I went to a lot of them and the the ones with the walking cane and the, the walking push they they were glad to have somewhere to go I have a question this is for the the um, recreation site across the river we're going to do two right yes ma'am there are a plan you've you've appropriated funding for two uh, we've kind of turned them as twin community centers one to be located at the Alice King facility off county home one to be located uh, right here at this site okay but we haven't seen a site plan for that one have we have I we will seen let that planning one? department <laughs> That's a great question. Yes, you have seen that <laughs> okay. probably for about a decade or more now. <laughs> uh, we have been envisioning that gym beside the existing community schools and recreation building for quite a long time. Actually, since the time Alice is in the audience tonight, mm -hmm. since Alice moved out there in 2005, that has been the designated space for that gym. Yes. And I'll say Alice is here as well as Jennifer Lanier Coward. She's uh, the director with Community Schools and Recreation. So, yes, we have a designated spot for that. Madam Chair, if I could add to that as well. The twin part is the building itself, the building, um, yeah. the recreation center gymnasium. The site plan will not be twins. That will vary based on the individual plans at each site. And we actually spoke um, this morning in departmental budget conferences, spent some good time talking with Alice Keene this morning about the things that we would need to start doing right now. And you may see included in your fiscal year 24 budget that I'll be presenting in May that talk about how things need to be rearranged um, to accommodate this recreation center. Some work that needs to start now so that we maintain the best quality soccer fields um, and things like that in terms of um, growth of that turf and so um, the site plans will vary but the buildings themselves would be twins okay. Yay. I'm excited I am too thank you thank you very much for your presentation I, I, I almost forgot she was standing <laughs> there We'll move on to the next thing. I think that's the manage, uh, manager's report. Yeah, the manager's report. Thank you. I have um, several items and then one add-on to your list this evening. The first are your meeting dates, May 1st. Remember, you only have one meeting the month of April, so we'll meet again at 6 p.m. on May 1st in this room, followed by budget workshops the mornings of May 2nd to the 4th, and then your second meeting in May will be the 15th. Um, Item B, employment, um, Employee Service Awards. We're going to do that a little bit differently. We've experimented with Employee Service Awards since we've gone to all nighttime meetings. And we found that the attendance in the evenings um, was not as great as it was during the day. We recognize that our true purpose in Employee Service Awards is to recognize the employee. And so um, quarterly, at 8 a.m. on the mornings after the meeting where we would announce them. I will just call out their names um, for the public on television and so that you can hear it. And then tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., everyone is invited to a breakfast reception for these awardees during their work day where we can make them feel appreciated and special. 
during their work day. Um, so receiving five years of service award this year will be Mary Buck in social services, Katisha Downing social services, John Gray solid waste and recycling, Timothy Griggs social services, Charlene May public health, Courtney Payton social services, Latasha Nicholson social services, Ben Rogers planning, Marquise Ross, Sheriff's Office, Kiana Ross, Tax Administration, Frank Shaw, Sheriff's Office, and Tasha Woolard, Social Services. Being recognized for 10 years of service tomorrow morning will be Matthew Anderson, Social Services, Dolores Farmer, Planning, Melissa Hathaway, Tax Administration, Michelle James, Social Services, Kelly Joyner, Public Health, Deborah Lovett, Social Services, Hope Melvin, Public Health, Cynthia Moore, Tax Administration, Angela Simpkins, Social Services, Jana Singleton, County Manager, and Tai Han Tran, Social Services. Receiving 15 years recognition tomorrow morning will be John Demery, Solid Waste and Recycling, James MacArthur, Emergency Management, Demetrius Parker in Public Health, and James Gardner in Public Health. Getting a 20-year watch and certificate will be for cash um, leave time in lieu of, or a watch, will be Chauncey Congleton in the Sheriff's Office, Jennifer Hardy in Public Health, and Lori Stewart in the Sheriff's Office. And then we have five 25-year recipients, Mark Harrell in Animal Services, Robert Jones in Public Health, Melinda Moglin in Human Resources, Wallace Moore in the Sheriff's Office, and Renee Williams in Public Health. They are all invited to a breakfast reception tomorrow morning in this room for those of you who can join to wish them well. And we will congratulate them. To <coughs> congratulate them then. I'm glad, Madam Manager, I am glad that you are doing this because when we uh, moved to both, both meetings at uh, evening time, we did not have an opportunity to meet the uh, employees and, and give them, uh, you know, show appreciation in person. Yeah, so I'm I'm happy that you are doing Great. this. Thank yeah. you. We'll try it this way, and hopefully um, it will be successful. Mm -hmm. And that is your item C, just to remind you that the service awards reception is April 4th, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. in this very room. Mm -hmm. um, item D is um, uh, something I wanted to make the board aware of um, that occurred over the last few weeks, just to keep you informed, and that is that we've had some significant vandalism of our county vehicles in our county parking lots. Um, on Friday, uh, March 24th, we had five county-owned vehicles damaged. Three of the five were broken into um, by a male subject, Matthew Russell Terry. He was arrested and taken to the Pitt County Detention Center, but he caused significant damage to a brand new 2023 Chevrolet Malibu, a 2022 Ford Escape, a 2020 Ford Escape, a 2007 Chevrolet Malibu, and a 2005 Chevrolet Silver Mal Malibu. Um, very um, malicious um, damage to all of those vehicles that have cost several thousand dollars to the county for repairs. Um, he took nothing, stole nothing, left everything behind, um, but left a great deal of damage that was very unsettling um, to county staff. And um, we worked our best not to disrupt services, but we pivoted and I wanted folks to know that. We were pleased that when he um, finished here, he went and vandalized some privately owned vehicles over on the Vident lot through the swift um, and prompt attention of the um, Vident Health ECU Police, ECU Health Police Department. He was apprehended and incarcerated. Um, so a gentleman who will, um, has some significant issues to say the least. Um, in addition to that, the next day, um, we have three Pats vans um, who had their catalytic converter stolen. And so, um, again, we worked diligently not to impact service, um, but we have um, wanted to share that with the board so you'll know it was happening. Also, um, share our message that um, Pitt County has no um, tolerance for that type of behavior on county property. We will cooperate with law enforcement and the district attorney's office to prosecute to the fullest extent under the law. And we have taken immediate measures to evaluate our lighting and our cameras um, so that this behavior stops. We've notified all of our workforce to be additionally careful um, while they're in their parking lot. Safety and protection of our people and property is of utmost importance. 
Um, so I wanted to let you know about that. Um, item E, Mideast Commission is having its 56th annual meeting on Thursday, April 20th at 6.30 p.m. at the Washington Civic Center. Um, if you are interested in attending that event, let the clerk know. Item F was March for Meals. This is just something um, uh, that I thought I'd share with you. Um, the month of March is the anniversary of the Older Americans Act Nutrition Program. And this is the second year in a row that Assistant Manager and Human Resources Director, um, Assistant Manager of um, Community, um, Florida Hardy and I went out and served a day of Meals on Wheels together um, as a um, token of public service um, to our community to celebrate Older Americans um, month um, and we had an enjoyable time interacting with our neighbors um, in this vicinity um, delivering those meals and I hope that we will make it an annual tradition our thanks to the Pitt County Council on Aging and Senior Center for giving us that opportunity um, to get a closer look um, into the folks who are um, served by this program it was pretty neat um, we'll do it again next year um, and then I have one add-on item um, that came about after we printed the agenda, and this actually um, will need your action if the board is so inclined. Um, and this relates to Pitt Community College. Pitt Community College um, has plans that you're aware of to, um, they had plans that they've shared with you with regard to a workforce development, workforce technology and development building. In evaluating options given the rising costs of construction, they um, discovered a building um, in Farmville that is 49,700 square feet um, with an additional building of 2,924 square feet that the Pitt Community College Board of Trustees has authorized the college to purchase, which will serve um, for workforce development um, in the Farmville area. Um, the co college will be purchasing that property with their state capital infrastructure funds. You might hear them as SCIF funds. They are asking for zero dollars from us for the purchase of this building um, because they have those funds set aside for this purpose. It is um, an incredible price for them and it was approved um, by the Pitt Community College Building Committee very recently by the Pitt Community College Board of Trustees. In order for the community college to purchase property, they need to have a letter of support from the Board of County Commissioners, and then it will go to the State Community College Board. Um, so if the board is supportive of that purchase, um, it's the Alliance One building in Farmville, if, if folks are familiar um, with what building that is. Um, I would recommend that we approve this transaction and would ask the board to authorize me to sign the form that they call the um, 3 1. It's a form that says capital improvement project approval that authorizes the community college to purchase it with no dollars. So there's three forms certification one, signs that there will be zero county dollars used for the purchase. Form number two says that there will be operating and utility costs that will become the responsibility of the county because we're responsible for all of their building utility costs. That's estimated over time to be $228,000 per year in line with all of their other buildings. Um, and then um, there's a line for me as county manager to sign off on it. And if the board is in agreement, I would ask you to authorize me to sign those three documents. Madam Chairman, like uh, Commissioner Ward, that we, <laughs> that we support those. I was making some notes. Move for Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner uh, Benji Forrest. Hall. Hall. I do it every time. You can only, only I'm so sorry. Right <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Benji Hall. I'll make it full. second. This is the first time you second one. I want to make sure I got you in. Thank you. Best vote. It passes. Thank, Thank you. you. I will sign those documents and return them to the community college so that they can stay on schedule and this can get to the state. That's all that I have for this month's report. All right, item for consent. 
Motion to approve. Motion Second to it. approve by Commissioner McLaughlin. Second by Commissioner Floyd Huggins. Is that correct? Commissioner Ward. Who, who seconded? Ward. 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 I'm sorry, Commissioner But Ward. you can if you try. Commissioner Ward seconded. Pass unanimous. Item for decision. Uh, Mike Taylor. I think we're doing pretty good. Good evening, Mr. Taylor. Good evening, Chair. Woman Perkins Williams and balance of the board. Um, this is an um, item of good news, frustrating news, and then some more good news. Um, and probably it's on some of your minds, and I know perhaps many in the public before you ask, it's probably, you're probably saying it's about time. <laughs> um, and, it, and it actually is. You probably saw from your material that the uh, great grants were announced and awarded in September of 2022. We've actually, as a county, been partnering with a number of internet service providers uh, since this time and earlier, um, well over a year ago, to support them in their efforts to become um, a grant recipient. So we have finally received uh, word from the state that um, they uh, have gotten their, or almost received their final uh, guidance uh, from U.S. Treasury for uniform uh, guidance compliance. So um, in that effort, and since we're only meeting once this month, um, we're asking the board to go ahead and allow the manager to approve that uh, agreement once it's received from the state. It's been reviewed by legal uh, and the manager. This is a three-party agreement. And um, <clears throat> before I, I move on to that, this also just kind of describes the limited ability that the county has in this space. Um, so it's not only been frustrating for you as a board uh, for one of your priorities, the public, but for us as well. Um, what we can do is offer some funding um, towards this effort. And so that's what this board did, and this is appropriation of ARPA funds in this particular grant award. So this three-party agreement will be between the state, the county, and this award recipient, Brightspeed. And so this amount for the county is $2.6 million. It's a $9.2 million project total. Um, and that um, award uh, or a contract will be executed. The state is going to oversee this. We're suggesting a 50% upfront payment and then a 50% payment at the end of the contract. Um, this is not the end of the story, though. This is the more good news. So there's a lot of additional funds from the state and federal level, as well as here in our ARPA funds that remain to be allocated. Uh, so the completing access to broadband really is going to give the county uh, more ability to help direct where those locations are going to go. So um, I know that um, a number of you have been contacted by some of your constituents about areas that are not being served. So this next wave, we will be able to say, we'd like to invest our funds and we'd like to see this area impacted. So <clears throat> the total there of about 700 million is part of the completing access, pole replacement, and the stop gap. I've mentioned the stop gap program before. That's really the area where somebody can see the service, they can see the pole, and then the company says, but it'll be $15,000 to connect you. Um, so that's, that's where I'm really more excited because I think that's going to have a more meaningful impact. Not that those other areas aren't deserving, they are, because there's a lot of areas that are not being served now. So I just kind of wanted to take that opportunity to, to give you a lay of the land of where we've been, where we are, and where we're yet to, to go. Questions? Happy. I'd like to move that we authorize um, the manager to sign uh, the agreement says, as recommended by uh, Mr. Taylor. I'll Co second that. Motion by Commissioner Nunnally and second by Commissioner White. Let's vote, please. Long time coming, but change is coming. Absolutely. It's about time. <laughs> yes. Next. Next item. 
So I'm standing in for uh, Cam Coburn, uh, Director of Transportation. Hmm? Oh, I did push it. I'm sorry. Unanimous. I'm standing in for Cam Coven, Director of Transportation, uh, this evening, um, who was not able to, to be here, to uh, request this board's consideration um, of a fair uh, adjustment and mileage rate. Um, <clears throat> Pitt Area Transit has two primary uh, rates that are set and established. Uh, first, through our advisory board. Uh, Commissioner Mel Melvin McLaughlin serves on that, and then this board as part of our published uh, rates and fares. Um, I am pleased to say that it's been since 2011 since we've had to become before this board uh, for consideration. Um, I commend uh, not only Cam but the entire staff of doing a great job of trying to maintain costs. We've uh, worked more closely with the state to maintain our fleet update, which has lowered our um, maintenance and our fuel cost. Um, <clears throat> we've also been able to uh, realize through the um, CARES funding and ARPA allocation of funds to offset these expenses uh, towards the uh, constituents that we serve. So that's, that's the good news in this story. Um, <clears throat> this, ca this question actually came up when we were uh, sharing this information with our advisory board as to um, why are we not increasing the amounts more. Um, we're trying to do an incremental increase and we also, because of the funding I just described, have been able to um, build up some level of fund balance. So we didn't want to pass that full rate onto the uh, public at this time. So we're going to use those funds to help offset and minimize the impact. You can see that our current rate is $1.90 per mile. We're uh, suggesting uh, a consideration of $2.15 a mile at our RGP, Rural General Public Fare currently at $7 uh, for one-way trip to $9. You can see for the prior fiscal year ending July uh, 30th, 2022, the cost per mile for last year was $2.31. This is reported to the state um, quarterly and then uh, an annual amount. And then our per trip cost was $19.31. So um, that is what's before you the, this evening, and this would go into effect uh, July 1. In the new fiscal year. Any questions? Madam Chair, motion to approve. Motion to, by Commissioner McLaughlin. Second. Second by Commissioner White. Let's vote, please. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Your next item is an appointment to the Pitt County Planning Board. Um, and it is recommended that this board appoint someone to serve in the District 4 and 5 representative seat to fill an unexpired term that expires September 30th. In your packet beginning on page 132, there are three candidates who have applied who are eligible for that seat attribute, Mary Molly Holderman, Grace Rains, and Stacy Moy. Madam Chair, I'd like to nominate Mary Holdman. Second. Okay, no, um, motion by Commissioner Nunnally, second by Commissioner McLaughlin. Any questions? Let's vote, please. Next. Um, the next is an appointment. Pass. To, Sorry. <laughs> the next is an appointment to the Pitt Area Transit Advisory Board. It's being recommended that you appoint Ms. Lauren Smith to the Pitt Area Transit Advisory Board to fill an unexpired term that expires April 15th of 2025. She will... Um, uh, replace Angela Brown, who um, is no longer with emergency management. I move to appoint Mo Ms. Smith. Motion by Commissioner Ward, second by second. Commissioner Huggins. Let's vote, please. Next. Um, item five was removed. Um, you're up to commissioners' comments or committee reports. We'll start to my left, Commissioner uh, Huggins. No comment. Commissioner Wo or White? No comment. Commissioner McLaughlin? No comment. Commissioner Smith? No comment. Commissioner Nunnally? No comment. Commissioner Holderman? I hope you get it right before That's you right. get it. Holderman? <laughs> no comment. I apologize so much. I don't know why these other names no come up. Commissioner Ward? Uh, no comment. I'm going to work on it. I'd like to say 
uh, to you out there about the trash. Let's work to get it all up and removed. And I'd like to thank um, Mr. Demery for the new um, buildings at convenience sites. Um, let's make sure they're anchored down. Thank you. Need a motion to go uh, to go into closed session. I could read the basis for that, Madam Chairwoman. Um, it has been suggested this body go into closed session under the following grounds to discuss location, relocation, or expansion of industry under North Carolina General Statute Is that 140, 143, 318.11A4. Uh, to consult with an attorney employed by the body to preserve the attorney client privilege under North Carolina General Statute 143, 318.11A3. To discuss Maurice Anderson versus Appeal. Uh, to discuss a personnel matter under North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A6. And finally, to prevent the disclosure of information that is not considered a public record under North Carolina General Statute 143-318-10. Motion to go into closed session. Second. Your motion by Commissioner White, second by Commissioner Grohorn. We are voting. Step out. That's okay if you'll advance it. All right, motion passed. We're in the closed session. We we'll now have a motion by Commissioner White. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the closed session minutes for March 20th. Second. Second. Second by me. Again, Commissioner Ward. Let's vote, please. Pass unanimous. Motion? Motion, Motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Benji. All of them. And you got it right now. Second by submission of White. Let's vote. Yeah, baby. We voted. Now we got it.